Welcome back. This is Business Today and I had told you earlier we are talking about PIP revolution and entrepreneurship in Kenya. And joining me is Mario Singh who is the founder and chair of Fullerton Markets and he's also an author, entrepreneur and investor. Welcome. Thank Welcome you for to having Business me Today and I believe this is your first time in Kenya. Well, it's actually my first time in the entire continent of Africa. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and deciding to come and visit us at KTN News. All right. Now, let's get into the conversation. PIP revolution. You are very um, well versed with this and you run with it. So what is it all about when you look at it? PIP revolution before you get to even entrepreneurship. Sure. Well, in a nutshell, it's an, actually an acronym. So if I'm going to put it in one sentence, the PIP revolution is basically a global movement that helps people to create wealth easier and faster than ever before. Mm -hmm. So what do the three letters actually stand for? P stands for proactive income. I stands for investive income and the last P stands for passive income. Mm -hmm. And I feel that everyone around the world, especially post COVID needs to develop these three different types of income. All right. And how did this idea come about? Did, was it influenced by COVID also because you've mentioned COVID. So how did this come about? Sure. Well, I genuinely enjoy writing. So I've written four books so far in my career and this is actually my fourth book. So. The first three books were based on trading and investing. But when COVID actually hit the world and everyone was affected by it, so everyone was locked at home. So I started writing The Magical Rule of Three, my fourth book, sometime in about February 2020 when the world went into lockdown. So when I wrote this book, it was basically based on 21 chapters that helped people in terms of personal success, financial success and business success. Now specifically, Kelvin, inside chapter 11 of the book, The Magical Rule of Three, I spoke about the PIP revolution. And inside there, I realized that many people caught on to it and they realized that yes, these are the three exact incomes that they have to build. And the reason for that is because I studied so many entrepreneurs. I researched all those that have achieved massive success in their lives. And I realized they have developed either one or more of those three incomes. All right, and now let's move on also and look at um, the economy right now. The global economy is at a crunch. Um, how does someone make sure that at least they stay afloat, a business person, a person who wants to get into entrepreneurship field, how do they even start? Uh, you look at the economy, it's uh, where it is. So what usually happens uh, because of your experience that you've gone through? So just bring us uh, to, through the process. Well, the first thing I will say is that the numbers don't look good. So generally to say that anybody who wants to start a business, as much as 70 to 80% of them actually failed in the first two years. So unless you are really sure and really passionate of starting something, especially in such a downtime like this, then I'd rather say not start. But for those who say, yes, I've got that burning desire, I want to start something. The first key I will always share with them is this, solve a big need. You can't just start a business because you feel like it. You've got to start a business because you're solving a real need in the market. So let me give you an example. When I started one of my companies called Fullerton Markets, I was so clear that I was solving a big need in the market. And the big need was essentially three things. Number one, I had to solve safety of funds. Number two, I had to solve the speed of execution. Number three, I had to solve a system of wealth creation. So those three points put together was a real need that could be solved in the market that my company, Fullerton Markets, could bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And now, come, let's come to Kenya. The entrepreneurship market within Kenya, it's your first time in Africa, you've decided to come to Kenya. Why Kenya? Well, I, before I answer why Kenya, I've got to mm -hmm. backtrack why Africa for a start. Yes. So I was actually in Johannesburg. I was invited to speak at a fintech conference. And that was really, people were really hungry to understand how they could unlock certain potential in the markets because of the downtimes. Now, after I saw that the potential was there, I then realized in Eastern Africa, right? So the countries of Kenya, Uganda, even Tanzania, just slightly down in the uh, in the south, I realized there's huge potential. 
that many people want to understand such information. So that's part of the reason why I'm here. If I was looking at the population of Kenya, like I think it's 55 to 60 million people now, and people are genuinely hungry. And the main reason why they're hungry, I, I realize, the Kenya currency has depreciated a bit, probably 20% over the last one year. Mm -hmm. And everyone is affected by inflation. Inflation is like between eight to 9% now. So people want real actionable strategies on how they can counter such problems of a depreciating shilling and a increasing inflation. Mm -hmm. All right, and also with this um, kind of challenges in Kenya, the, the number of days that, you, that you've stayed here, how long have you stayed in Kenya so far? Well, or this is actually my first day. I actually landed right yesterday. in the morning. This morning, in fact, mm -hmm. and straight into the studio. And, and even as you are in Johannesburg and yes. you look at the fintech market, you look at the tech uh, side of business, Kenya is one of the, of the, of the areas where this is very much, um, uh, very much popular. What would be your advice to someone who wants to get into the tech business and they ha don't have the finances, they don't have the ways in, uh, in which they can move forward? So what would be uh, your advice to such a person? Well, that's a great question. So I'm in the area of fintech. So basically, it's a combination of finance and technology. So many people, because they are generally young, most of the median age is below 30 years old and people are always interested how they can make money essentially with just an internet connection and a laptop or a mobile phone. Now the beauty of leveraging on this technology is that you don't need a lot of capital to start. What you really need is number one, a mindset of growth and number two, certain skill sets. Mm -hmm. So I always share with people, it's so important to find the right mentor. Money is never the issue because money always chases value. So the key is to build value in yourself. Money will naturally be attracted to the person who has value. Mm -hmm. And also, what, what is the approach? What um, is the approach to um, entrepreneurship? globally uh, because since COVID came some companies shut down actually very many companies shut down and now we are post COVID so what is the approach what or what should be the approach to business at this uh, particular time specifically I would say get on board the PIP revolution so if I'm going to go slightly deeper into what the PIP revolution actually is so the first one I mentioned was proactive income Proactive income basically means that you've got to develop a high income skill. And once you develop that skill in yourself, you can then take that skill and exchange it for a fee, a salary or commission in the market. So you earn money, proactive income. Number two, investive income. You've got to understand the markets. You just have to. And the key is that it's not difficult. I didn't have a financial background. What I did have was a good mentor. So investive income basically means you're using a small amount of money, you are trading it in the markets and you get a return. Mm -hmm. And finally, passive income basically means that you are now invested into a system and it pays you passively. You develop a system once like a business and it pays you passive income like your royalties or like your profits or like your dividends. So the key for entrepreneurship, again, as we discussed, solve a need. You've got to solve a real need in the market. And number two, because you are a boss, a CEO, you've got to understand all three incomes. Mm -hmm. Even as you solve a need in the market, everyone, most people, 90% of, of, of markets right now are flooded. And uh, as a business person, uh, you want to get into the field and say, okay, I want to make sure that I sort this need. You find almost 100 others with the same idea. So how do you make sure that you stand out from these others who are the same as uh, the business that you want to uh, just bring, bring forward? I think that's a great question. And one thing that my earliest mentors always taught me was to be different. That's it. So while you are solving the need, you can be different in terms of the context. So in terms of the content, if you are solving the need, if there are real actionable strategies on how you need to solve it, then that's the content. Like essentially, if you're looking at a glass of water, the content, the strategies is the water. But the context, you can change the context. You can change the packaging. Are you delivering the water in a plastic cup? Are you delivering it in a crystal cup? Are you delivering it in a, in a brown cup? 
So the key is to be different because once you're different, the attention span starts to shift to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that was key. That was something that Steve Jobs said many years ago, which I find to be so true. To stand out, really, you just got to be the red umbrella in a sea of white umbrellas. Mm -hmm. All right, and also even as you be uh, become a, uh, you stand out among the rest. So, for example, the local businesses that we have, someone would want to have the uh, vision of moving forward to the global market because you find that the standards of the global market are not the same with the local ones. So, how how do you make sure that at least you when you move as you are moving to get to the global markets, you stay afloat and become uh, one of the different companies that we have globally. Well, to scale on a global level, I think that most companies have got to look at three factors. Number one, I call it the geographic factor. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Basically, if you are a local business in Kenya and you want to expand further out, well, you've got to understand that you have to move into different markets, the geographic factor. So you've got to understand the culture, the needs, the problems in those areas. So that's the first thing, the geographic factor. Number two, I call it the demographic factor. Now, what is the demographic factor? It basically means that in any country, there are different segments of society. There's the retail crowd, there is the high net worth crowd, there is the businesses and the companies. So you've got to clearly demarcate from a demographic stance what these people need. Mm -hmm. And finally, after geographic and demographic, you have to understand psychographic. And what really is psychographic? It basically means mm -hmm. you have to sell to their different tastes and their different values. Because not everybody likes to eat rice, as an example. Some people like to eat noodles. Mm -hmm. And that, I feel, really summarizes what any global entrepreneur needs to have. You've got to solve these three key factors when you move from a local brand to a global brand. Geographic factors, demographic factors, psychographic factors. All right, and even as you identify the three, uh, the geog geographic, demographic, and also the uh, psychographic uh, factors, how do you navigate and make sure that this don't uh, affect you? And also, how do you um, just recognize them? Because someone might be starting a business and they don't know what these uh, things really mean. So how do you make sure that you separate them and say, okay, I've achieved this, and let me move and look at if I'm going to make sure that all these three work for me? I think that's a great question. And the way I'll answer it is like this, right? I always share with entrepreneurs, don't think too much. Many entrepreneurs are very theoretical. Before they even move, they're starting to give themselves certain challenges or obstacles. And I always tell them, just take the first step. Once you take the first step, you're able to understand, should I pivot or should I pace? Meaning to say, do I change my strategy or do I build momentum in the same direction? Because the markets are never wrong. The markets will always tell you whether or not you're moving in the right direction. So I always tell people, just get moving. Because once you're building momentum, the market will give you that feedback. If you're doing it rightly, do more of it. Mm -hmm. If the market is not buying whatever you're doing, then pivot and change your strategy. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move to challenges because, of course, uh, when starting a business, any business that you're starting, there are always challenges that come about. Some of the challenges make people give up. Uh, someone starts a business and then maybe just a year down, they say, okay, this is not important, uh, important. Let me just focus on another thing. So how does someone get off the challenges and also uh, revive their business that maybe they had closed for a, a very long time. Sure. And, and when it comes to this question, I think the first key word is this word called resilience, right? So persistence and resilience are one in the same. Entrepreneurs have got to resolve upfront that they will push through the challenges, they will push through the pain no matter what. All the great entrepreneurs of the world, they had already predicted and anticipated that challenges will come. It will never be a bit of roses. As we discussed earlier, the statistics are always working against the entrepreneur. Eight out of 10 of them will fail. So what makes any entrepreneur think that he or she will make it? They've got to resolve upfront that challenges will come. They will push through the pain. They will have a positive mindset. They will never give up no matter what. 
And I can tell you of all the entrepreneurs that I have spoken to, once you resolve up front that you will never give up, you will reach your goal. It may just take a different amount of time, but you will absolutely reach your goal. If you decide up front, you will never give up. So resilience is a, is a really understated quality in entrepreneurs. They've got to have that resilience in them. Mm -hmm. All right. And You've, you just landed yesterday, and I, I believe you've spent some hours uh, in Kenya, and also you are in Johannesburg. So as you look at businesses in Africa and how we operate and how we, uh, we move about, what is different between how we do business and uh, outside, outside globally? Uh, is there a difference, and what can we maybe pick from the others, and what can they also learn from us? Let me start by saying what businesses outside can learn from what I've seen in Africa, what I've seen in Johannesburg, what I've seen in Nairobi, the desire to learn. Honestly, when I, work, when I start talking to people and I see that fire in their eyes, because I know that there are challenges, even when I'm reading. In Johannesburg, when I was speaking on the FinTech panel, I actually said something that made the whole crowd went quiet. And I said this, that the GDP per capita of South Africa is actually lower now compared to 10 years ago. And they know this. And coupled with the problem that inflation is so high, people are looking for a way out. So I see the desire in their eyes, the willingness to learn. And I can tell you, the areas that I come from, which are a bit more well-to-do, people don't have that desire to learn and to grow. So that's one thing we can definitely pick uh, from the African continent. Mm -hmm. In terms of what the African continent can learn from people on the outside, I think it's just a bit more exposure. So once we come out, right, there's a key statement that environment is such an important part. So we are living in a time now that everything is all democratized already. Understand a bit more what, hope, what happens on a global scale. Broaden our global worldview. And once we do that, I think it will put the entrepreneur in a very good state. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just ask you maybe the second last question before we, we wrap up. Um, because in, a, in a, a, an economy where there's a lot of taxation, there's a lot of a fee that you ha you are, you're supposed to pay, uh, how do you make sure that, because you've really explained and said, okay, know the markets, know, someone might know the markets, they might uh, know everything that they need to know in order for them to uh, move on with a business or start a business, but you see there are all these levies that you have to pay, there are all these taxes that you have to pay. How do you make sure that these taxes don't affect you and you just move on and be successful? One sentence, earn more. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. And, and why do I say this, Calvin? It's because if you think about cutting expenses, there's only a certain amount that you can cut because everybody has got expenses, right? You've got a certain basic living expenses that you've got to have. So I think it's a very poor mindset if people think, oh, I've always got to cut, cut, cut expenses. But as you, can, you, you can't cut to the bone. So the key is to actually expand the mindset and think of how to earn more. Classic example, even in Kenya now, instead of if people had a choice to be earning income from the Kenya shilling or the US dollar or the British pound, if I were to give people a choice, what would they say? They would say US dollar or the British pound. Then focus on industries or focus on strategies that can help you to earn US dollars and British pound. So that's the key. Instead of thinking how to cut lower, all right, to save and pay for all these taxes, have an abundant mindset in place. Think of how to earn more and leverage the trend of what's happening out there. And it's easy. The key that people are missing is just knowledge. Mm -hmm. The key is knowledge. All right, now let's also look at your mission in Kenya. First of all, how long are you here for? And um, uh, will you be meeting with some of uh, the startup companies that are coming up, some entrepreneurs? Just explain to us about this. Sure. So my stay here is only about three to four days. It's a little bit short. Um, the, the key event that I'm actually having is a business conference that I'm hosting two to three days from now. So I really want to gather a group of entrepreneurs. And I think people are coming. So far, I think like a hundred entrepreneurs are coming. And I just want to lay it out to them. Because I've been a beneficiary, Kelvin, of mentorship. And there's a key word I want to share with people. I didn't do too well in school. And today I've done fairly well for myself. I understand the financial markets. And the only reason I've done well is because those who have gone before me have poured themselves into me. So I understand the power of mentorship, 
how someone is able to guide me from a zero to a hero and i want to do that i want to pay that forward so that's the short answer that's the mission i want to share with people the exact strategies of financial education all right even as we wrap up uh, give us your parting shot um even as we uh, come to uh, close well my parting shot is always my motto and i always share with people dream the impossible do the unthinkable and enjoy the incredible all right uh, do the unthinkable and enjoy the, the incredible. incredible. Right, uh, that is Mario Singh, who is the founder and chair of Fullerton Markets, and he's also an author, an entrepreneur, an investor. He's come to Kenya to just uh, have a conversation with entrepreneurs, fintech, and startups also um, uh, with us here. All right, we've come to the end of business today. My name is Kelvin Yakudi. Stick around. View your KTN coming up next. <laughs>